what's going on guys welcome back to the channel um i know it's been a while so don't <laughs> don't come at me okay anyways this week was a bit of a rush it's me getting back into the weeks you guys know that i took i went away for a week um put out a couple of episodes earlier in the week but then my week got really busy because i was trying to catch up with the things that i was supposed to do that week and stuff goes on but anyways we are back and for the next i think about three or four days i will be hitting you guys with a lot of reactions so don't worry about it we are here and i am ready okay so spartacus gods of the arena um we are here with the final episode i'm ready to see how they wrap up the prequel to season one seeing the rise and the fall of house batiatus <laughs> you know so we're gonna just jump in man i don't want to waste you guys time here on the intro and i will have my thoughts after of what i thought of this prequel and also of the episode we're about to watch so let's go watch the episode and i'll see you guys over there and see you guys right back here for the review Okay, Game of Thrones, where you at? <laughs> Game of Thrones, where are you? You know, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Where are you, man? Because you know why? And it's hard to tell because to me, to me, to me, seven seasons of Game of Thrones, I would have to say is one of the greatest um tv shows experience that i've ever experienced and i'm not saying that to say it couldn't be better and notice that i'm saying seven seasons because season eight was trash nothing made sense <laughs> in season eight they were just trying to make it a spectacle which it was it was a spectacle it was something to grasp to look at to get excited about you get what I'm saying? But the meaning of everything that was built up just went to trash. So the reason why I'm saying this is because if there's still, I don't know if they're still planning to do a prequel to Game of Thrones, but if you're going to do a prequel, this is how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I really love this. I really love the fact that we got to see the rise of, of we, we we get to see so many payoffs of things that we were wondering about in season one and that's what you do you try to kind of explain those storylines and how they took place because in season one there was a lot of relationships that we didn't understand especially the relationship between batiatis and salonius like how did they became enemies when the prequel started we saw that they were friends so now we get to see throughout these six episodes how the relationship developed over time and how it eventually they became um not friends right so we knew from the get-go that Sol now we know that Salonius never owned a ludus and how he came to own a Ludus, which is what I said when I was watching this episode. I was like, oh, so this is how he got a Ludus. He's going to make this deal with Vettius to get this Ludus. Me not knowing that he had had a prior deal with Batiato saying um, they were supposed to split the men. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so Salonius is, is those type of, is, is the type of guy like this, like, I believe that he was loyal to Batiatas, but Batiatas just keeps kept slighting them. So eventually a person like that is going to be like, man, basically F you and all your peoples, okay? I'm going to try to do this on my own. And I think the last straw was when he disrespected them in the house, when he was trying to give them good counsel, you know what I'm saying? And he just straight up disrespected them, like on so many levels, you know what I'm saying? And... You can see how things just got worse and worse and worse and worse from the insults and stuff like that. Now, mind you, he was still being a snake behind the scenes. He, he kind of, him and Titus got this, 
kind of the same kind of nature. Him and, you know, Salonius and Titus, same kind of nature. They don't want to really ruffle feathers. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Batiatus kind of turned Salonius into basically a savage like him. You get what I'm saying? So um, before Salonius was kind of like Titus, he makes deals. He don't want to see people get get hurt for no reason. You get what I'm saying? Like he would bring the information you know what I'm saying? And try to smooth things over so that nobody gets hurt. But the problem is that Batiatus got hurt from the beginning, you know, from Tullius pissing on him and all of this other stuff. Like, all of that stuff that took place kind of turned Batiatus into the savage he, he is, you know, until his death, of course. So you can see the turning point of where, you know, of all the stuff that he's being slighted had and people are treating him like dirt, like he's the underbelly of society and all of this other stuff when he has this grand ambition of being more of, you know what I'm saying, of becoming more of being, you know what I'm saying, the owner of this great house and Ludus and stuff like that. And people are keep telling you that that's all you will ever be, you know, so that's got to sting a little. That's kind of like, you know, a parent telling a child, hey, this is all you can be. So don't aim for anything higher. You get what I'm saying? So it, it when it comes on to how they set it up, it was it was brilliant. The story that it, they told. I wonder if Bat Batiatus didn't seem like he ever found out that it was Lucretia that killed his dad. So I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't seem like he ever found out. You know, he found out about Crixus. Um, so we got to see that. So what I'm wondering now, you know, what I'm wondering now is if Gannicus shows up in season two, which we're about to start watching. I'm hoping that he does. Because cause giving us this backstory and him getting freedom, and now that all the freaking gladiators are free from the house of Batiatas, does Anameas go out and try to find him? Does Crixus go out and try to find him? Because he did say that at the end of the, the episode. He's like, when you gain your freedom, come find me. You know what I'm saying? So I wonder if he's still in Capua. That would be nice to see him show up in season two. That would be awesome. If we get some Gannicus in season two, I would be ecstatic to see him. Hopefully he shows up. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he shows up. Because he's one of my favorite characters from the prequel, of course. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. Hopefully he shows up. Season two, season two, I don't care. We still got three more seasons to watch. So hopefully he did show up. Um, hopefully they did end the show. You know what I'm saying? Because I heard it, it was canceled. Um, which, you know, was kind of like a spoiler for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, um... Somebody did put that in the comment section to tell me that Spartacus got canceled. Um, so I, you know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily a spoiler, spoiler, but it was kind of like, it kind of, kind of dumbed down my expectations a little bit, to be honest. Um, because I'm like, okay, they got canceled, so they probably rushed the final season. Because that's how things are. You, you know what I'm saying? You rush to finish. Um, some networks will give you the time to wrap up things in a good amount, good amount of episodes, but a lot of times it could be a clean cutoff. Most of the time it's a clean cut, like they just not hearing no more episodes, but sometimes they do give them enough time to kind of finish up and kind of wrap the story up, um, you know, for the fans, for the people that are, that actually watch. A lot of time things that's canceled, it could be by about budget could also be about viewership you know how many people is viewing it when it's aired and stuff like that if they're not making the money back because you know everything ha with entertainment and tv shows anime whatever it's all about who's watching you get what i'm saying it's all about who's watching um first and foremost and then you know budget if it costs too much to make and that revenue is not coming back in based on viewership and, you know, ads and all of this other stuff, which a show like Spartacus that is on stars, you're not worried about commercials. It's more about, you know, viewership and how many people are actually signing up um, for whatever 
TV network or whatever, how many people are signing up just to come watch Spartacus? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So if that money is not there, you get what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to get, because I heard this was a, you know, kind of expensive, not, ex not as expensive as Game of Thrones, but it was up there with, with how much it costs to make this. Because, I mean, just visual effects alone, you can imagine just the visual effects alone because you can see that there's a lot of green screen being being used um so a lot of that when it comes on to green screening and stuff like that a lot of that budget money goes into editing that and do put in the right backgrounds in and all of that other stuff most of the money goes to the visual effect effects team when you're using a lot of green screen um that's why movies like you know what I'm saying? Mar the Marvel movies and all this other stuff that they cost so much money to make. And it's basically just all visual effects. They do most of the stuff behind green screen. They do do some stuff on set. Game of Thrones use green screen for special effects like the dragons and all of this other stuff. Like for those, they shot some scenes with green screen, blue screen, whatever you want to call it. But they did do a lot of location um, shooting. They did do a lot of location shooting when it comes on to Game of Thrones. They didn't do that much in the show. It's hard to find somewhere where you can recreate this kind of environment. You get what I'm saying? They could go and build sets all over the place, but I think this was done in a studio. It doesn't look like it was done like on a specific location or anything. None of it looked like it was done on a certain location all of it looked like it was done basically in a studio with a with a specific set you get what i'm saying so um so props out to them man they did an excellent job with this prequel man and i love these characters even more even though we lost basically everybody in the house of batiatas now when it comes on to diona that was a surprise because I thought she got away. I wonder if the same thing is going to happen um, to Nivea, which which that's going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a curse to, you know what I'm saying? Like, to, it's like, I didn't expect them to catch her. How did they catch her? That would have been nice to know how they caught up with her. You know what I'm saying? I guess somebody saw her and recognized her from the house and be like, uh, Why? are you not at the house you're supposed to be a slave like did you gain your freedom you know so she got killed got executed so it was a brutal time back then man and i'm looking forward for more so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this with me man i definitely enjoyed these six episodes and now we're going on to season two as i said the one thing i'm hoping for in season two is for gatticus to make a return um, so I want to see what's going to take place during this, um, season two premiere or whatever. Um, hopefully I can get that out to you guys in the next couple of days. Um, I'm definitely going to start season two either tomorrow or Monday. So look out for that. Okay. So I'm trying, I'm working on the schedule now because there's some things that I'm planning to change, um, on the channel. So I'm working on some things guys. So be patient with me. There's some some big changes when it comes on to the scheduling of the channel that is that is coming i'm still going to be putting out the schedule on a weekly basis but there's something special that i want to do like for the final week of every month um just so those people are not left out also we hit 4,000 subscribers on the channel which is i never talked about it in any of the videos before but it did happen um, last week while I was away. Um, so congratulations to us. We're at 4,000 subscribers and we're going to hit the ground rub running, um, coming up next week. So thank you guys so much for tuning in as always. Leave your thoughts in the comment section as always. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Terabyte out. See you guys later.